People across Canada are facing rising food costs, and for some, that might mean having to buy less food that's also less nutritious in order to make ends meet. But what if there was a way our bodies could get more out of smaller quantities of food? Turns out there's a technology that can help with that, and it's thousands of years old fermentation. Now, I know what you're thinking. We can't live on beer, sauerkraut, and kimchi. But fermentation is so much more than that. And in Saskatchewan, people are looking at ways it can help improve food security. Historically, fermentation was used to extend the shelf life of food. More recently, it's being harnessed to produce more nutritious food in a more environmentally friendly way. Last November, we officially hit 8 billion people on the planet, and we need to be able to feed the world nutritiously and sustainably with less land, less water, and less resources. So when you think about fermentation, yeah, there's the classic things that humans have been doing for millennia, cheese, beer, wine, yogurt, where we are going now around precision fermentation, the understanding of the science of how organisms make proteins or flavors or uh, even textures, we can design foods, design ingredients that make food either more nutritious and more flavorful. So, instead of growing more food, we could feed more people with smaller quantities of nutrient-rich foods. For instance, vegetarian products could be designed to have just as much protein as meat. Stephen Webb was the first person to explain to me how fermentation could possibly help with that. Fermentation basically means converting microorganisms into food products and ingredients that have specific functions. And the bioengineering to begin that starts right here. We're standing in front of this, what looks like a very large microwave, or if you're old enough, Vox TV. Yes. <laughs> um, please tell me what this is actually called and what we're looking at here. It's called the Onyx, and it's a uh, solid state yeast and bacterial engineering platform. And what does that mean? It means that we're able to design, build, and test new designs of proteins. Yes, when you're starving, you need calories, and you don't care what those calories are, but when we think about food security, food sustainability, we need to be thinking about nutrition. And that's why companies are shifting their attention to this technology. I'm at AGT Food and Ingredients. They're gonna show me how they're experimenting with fermentation to create new products involving peas, lentils, chickpeas, stuff we have a lot of in Saskatchewan. So what we do in some cases is we get their ingredients here where we do some evaluation on their chemistry, on their physical properties, their, their texture, their uh, viscosity generation, a bunch of things. We pick a few of them and then we go next door in our uh, test kitchen and actually make a food product out of it. AGT wants to figure out how to take the crops we grow in Saskatchewan and across the world and get more out of them. After all, there's only so many ways that you can eat chickpeas. So, they're exploring ways that fermentation could be used to create tastier, more nutritious food products and ingredients. That includes everything from vegetable-based meat alternatives to enriched flours. What we're trying to do with all our tools, including fermentation, is make it more accessible, uh, make it easy. Another thing to know about proteins, not all of them are created equal. Some of them are harder for the body to digest, meaning we don't get as much out of them. Provita Nutrition is trying to change that. If we can increase the protein digestibility uh, from 70, 75%, which is typical into the legumes, uh, to somewhere 85, 90%, then we will be wasting less food and we can make it more digestible. So far, this Saskatchewan company has been experimenting with fermentation to feed animals more nutritiously for less money. And they're using local crops to do it. We are in the breadbasket of Canada after all. Might as well find a way to turn those fields into food we can use here. So fermentation is a vital component that can deal with it, all those kinds of crops, and we can definitely produce some value-added components in the province where we can definitely improve the economy and we can have improved uh, food and feed production. 
Provida is working on scaling up their operations in small town Unity to support that work. But many companies in Canada toying with fermentation don't have those kinds of resources. There are so many organizations in Canada working in this space and when we combine all these efforts, still there is not enough capacity. So this is a really growing area. Over the next 30 years, uh, we'll be needing quite a bit of fermentation and the bioengineering research, incubation and the commercialization for the startups to grow. That's where the Saskatchewan Food Industry Development Centre can help. So our mandate is really to help the agri-food companies in Saskatchewan to help them uh, innovate and commercialize their products from a smaller scale and helping them to go larger scale and develop their and sell their products uh, nationally and also internationally. More money and more manufacturing infrastructure is needed to see continued innovation in food fermentation. The other challenge that I think we face and we can't ignore it here in Canada is that we need to think about the regulatory and policy environment because again that's a critical element to being able to bring new innovations to place. We can't afford to be behind in terms of being able to unleash uh, the technology potential to be able to have our scientists developing new tools that are more precise, safer and more predictable. But right now, they're having trouble keeping up. So we'll go see the sequencing facility. Okay. Sounds good. So is this what you wanted to show me here? Yes, this is the uh, liquid handling system. And like we talked about at the last station with the black box that looks like a microwave, where it relies on automation. If you were to come back in a year to gifts, you would see seven more of these and more and more of our workflow will be automated just because of the demand that we have. The idea of using fermentation in these ways to tackle food insecurity is relatively new, but there's a lot of interest and the potential is huge. Fermentation in the 21st century represents a huge two to four trillion dollar opportunity in terms of the new bioeconomy. It's thought of the next bio revolution or next industrial revolution. The big hurdle is how to translate those great ideas in the lab into products you can pluck off of grocery store shelves at affordable prices. Canada has plans to support this. For one, the Saskatchewan Food Industry Development Centre is building a large facility to support product commercialization. I think the industry, food industry, as a whole in Saskatchewan is, is starting to flourish. Like uh, when I came to Canada 20 years ago, every crop was just exported, pretty much. Now people are making finished products. So that's a great atmosphere to be in. As the world population continues to grow, we're gonna have to get creative to feed more people with less. So keep an eye out on how researchers are putting new spins on the age old process of fermentation. It may just be one solution. Thank you.